Hello and welcome to our webinar today. We are going to be talking about streamlining 1095C filing utilizing the power of our 1095 import tool. So thanks for coming and let's get going. So this is a overview of what we're going to cover. Well, a 1095 overview, overview just a brief one the 1095 filing deadlines for this year or for the 2023 tax year, a bit about the 1095 importer tool itself, and then how we can help you use that and, and uh, file your 1095Cs. So I am Sandy Strong. I'm a senior BA with implementation specialists, and I've been with the company just about four years, but in ERP for a long time and working on GP much of that time. And I work a lot with our tools and do some consulting work as well. Okay, so a little bit of background on 1095. They started when the Affordable Care Act was implemented. So back in, 2014 or the 2014 tax filing year um, they were optional but ever since the 2015 filing year it has been mandatory to do 1095c filing and these are the forms you know as an employee you would see in the mail each time about this time of year that shows if you were covered by health care and what the premium minimum premium was and information like that on it. And companies that have to do this are the ones that are considered applicable large employers or acronym ALE. And this is companies with 50 or more full-time employees or full-time employee equivalents. And those ALE employers have to offer health insurance and then thereby also have to provide 1095 Cs to their employees. And you might be wondering what's a full-time equivalent? Yes. The federal government defines that as um, taking all the hours your employees work, so even if they're part-time employees, so let's say you've got uh, 10 part-time employees that worked only uh, for e to make it easy, we'll say, um, or 12 part-time employees that work just 10 hours a month, so that's a total of 120 hours for the month. And then you divide that by 30. And so that's four full time equivalents, even though everybody was part time. So if you've got more than 50 full time equivalents, you have to file 1095 C's. And then here is just a link to an IRS um, instructions on the 1095 C's, or you can just go online and search for 1095 instructions and you'll probably get the same exact link. So yeah, that's kind of, you know, just a quick overview on the 1095s. And here's a picture of one. This is from my demo data in GP. So employee information, employer information, and this is kind of the meat of it down here, these lines 14, 15, and 16. So the line 14 is the offer of coverage. It's what insurance was offered to the employee. And these are codes that are covered in the instructions, but they go from 1A all the way to 1U. But common ones are 1A, which is minimum essential coverage offered. 1H is no offer of coverage. And again, there's more on that in the instructions. 
the employee required contribution. This is the minimum um, contribution for the lowest cost self-only coverage. And then the line 16 is safe harbor codes, which is employee status for each month. So in this example, 2A is not employed during the month. And 2C is the employee was enrolled in health coverage. So, and these ones can be anywhere from 2A to 2H. And again, it's covered in more detail in the instructions on the IRS site. But all of this information should come from your insurance provider when they send you that information early in each calendar year for the prior year's tax filing. And our 1095C filing deadlines for the 2023 tax year are quickly approaching. So to furnish them to employees, it's supposed to be by March 1st, which is this Friday. Paper filing is by tomorrow. Electronic filing by April 1st. So you've got a little over a month there. And then the number of uh, 1095 Cs that mandate electronic filing rather than paper filing continues to drop. And so for the 2023 tax year, if you have to file 10 or more 1095 C records, you need to now do it electronically rather than printing paper copies and snail mailing them in. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, moving on. So the meat of this is about our 1095 importer tool. So you may know that you can go into GP and manually update the 1095C information, but if you've got a bunch of those to do, you don't want to have to do it all manually. And that's when, where our 1095 importer tool comes in handy because you can take the health coverage information you get from your insurance provider, which is normally always in a spreadsheet format, and then put it into the format required for our importer tool, which is in my experience, very similar to what your provider sends anyway. So there's not a lot of uh, manipulation required to get it into our template. And we include the template with the tool. We include the instruction manual with the tool. So then you get it into that template um, and then can upload it from there into GP. And so you can do this for employee records. And then if your provider spreadsheet also includes records for spouses and dependents, those can be uploaded as well. And so we bring it into some tables that go with the 1095 importer tool, and then it pushes those into payroll tables. And it does involve some work in SQL too, um, but not too difficult. And that's where, well here first, this is an example, or this is a screenshot of our 1095 importer tool. So once you have the data put into the template that we provide, then you just pick your reporting year, which is of course 2023 for this year, and pass to where you put that file and then just click process and you know if it's just maybe 10 records are under it just takes a few seconds if you've got a few hundred of them it might take half a minute or so but it goes pretty quick and then they are all in there and if there's any issues it runs into like um a duplicate social security 
number or uh, something like that or missing data, it'll let you know, but it'll still import the rest. So then you can just fix whatever had an issue and then move on. And I'm gonna quick flip over to, whoops, escape out of here. So I just wanted to show briefly. So this is our, our tool. Like I said, we, we send a template with it that's in this kind of format, which you know I think makes sense, the line six, 14 values, line 16 values, the contributions. So it, it's pretty simple and straightforward. And you put it into that template, save it as a uh, tab delimited text file, and, and then again, just pick your year here and pass to it. There is a little bit of work in SQL, as I mentioned, um, doing some backups of tables just to, you know, before you do the import in, in case you need to restore that for any reason and um, cleaning up a little bit of data. And, and then these are just to check it when we're done so that, you know, like in this case, if I'm importing a dozen records, I should see a dozen in our SQL queries when we're done. And also, you know, of course, we can come in here and view them under the edit W2s here with the 1095C. And then we can print them, whoops, here under the print W2s if we want to look at them. And then let's hop back into our uh, slides. So how we can help. Something that is pretty cool is we will give you this 1095 importer tool for free. So just reach out to us if you want to have it and I will give it to you. Um, I've got the info on that on a coming slide if you wanna get in touch with us for that. And we will give you the tool for free, you know, and as I mentioned also the template and the user manual. If doing it is more than you want to deal with we can help too by putting the data in the template for you and importing it into gp for you we do that for a lot of our customers and um, are happy to do that for you and then once the data is in gp all the 1095 c records then you can, if you do have less than 10, you could print them, but otherwise you can electronically file them, not directly in GP, but you can use green shades along, if you, you have the connector or the tax filing center, and that'll push the data that is now in GP over into green, sh green shades so that it's electronically filed there. And, and then you can submit it to the government there. And also, um, um, you know, that they're, they're there then for in the future. And you can print from there if you want as well. So, and as I've noted here, we can also help with that electronic filing with green shades if you want our help with that. So, Again, just to reiterate, the tool is available for free. We don't do this with very many of our tools, but we do offer this one available at no charge to whoever wants it. And Leah, are there any questions so far? Nope, we're all good. Okay. Well, that's kind of what I was going to cover. So just kind of to recap, we did a little overview of the 1095C history, the filing deadlines for the 2023 tax year, what the 1095 importer tool does, and how we can help you use that, and also file with green shades if you would like help with that. 
And here is how you can reach out to us if you want to get this tool, or you can just email me directly, sandy at iscorp.biz. But we've got these emails here too. And I want to let you know about some upcoming webinars. We've got some great ones coming up. March 5th, hosting GP in Azure, unlocking the power of cloud computing for Dynamics GP. And all of these are at 2 p.m. Then March 7th, WENSOFT ISV days, where we're talking WS tools and how to extend the value of GP and WENSOFT with WS tools. And on March 19th, one that I think a lot of people would really like to hear, investing in Dynamics GP for the long haul. And I don't have it on here, but we also have a couple of webinars coming up on WS Tools for Payroll on March 7th and 14th, I believe. So the 7th, we'll actually have two of them, one at noon and then this one here at two. And with that, if there are no questions, I want to say thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. And let us know if you have any questions or want any more information about the 1095 importer tool or in, want to see about any of the other tools we have. Thank you.